This is week two of IT375. This week we're going to be putting together all the materials we'll be using for the website, the final project. We'll be brainstorming and putting together ideas that are going to help us design the project. For brainstorming, you can sit down with a pencil and a piece of paper and just write out whatever comes into your mind. Create, try to create associations, things that are relevant to the, to the design you're working on. Then after you've done all this, you just filter everything out, leaving what's relevant, you know, and then move on with your design. Mood boards are a really big help when you're trying to figure out which direction you're going to go with type, with pictures, graphics. If you look at this mood board, you can see it's going to communicate in a certain way. And that's done by using the, the fonts, the type of graphics you have here, which are vector type graphics that you'd find in something like, you could create an illustrator. And here's your color scheme right up here. So you see you're going to have kind of a warm feel to it. Now that's, that's you know, at the level this is created at is pretty sophisticated. Right here is another mood board done by somebody else. Not quite so sophisticated, but they're just trying to get ideas for their design. Here's another one where you see they've used different types of typefaces, different graphics they're going to use, and here's their color scheme for this, which, which looks like it's going to be something futuristic. If you look at this typeface here, here's another mood board, and this is a mood board that looks pretty professional. It has all your fonts you're going to use, type of graphics that are going to be used, your color scheme, and even some of the um, items that will be on the page you can see here. Here's one more mood board where you have a color scheme, the graphics, and here you even have textures. You have the fonts they're thinking of using here, and some of the pictures. Now we're looking at logos. The first logo I'm looking at here is really nice. It's use of negative space, create the spoon. It has nice, if you look at the logo, it has a good flow, how the eye flows. Another thing about creating a logo is sometimes the best idea is just to start off with black and white. Because you might be looking at the colors and you don't like the colors. You know, it, it's, a, it's a stumbling block. So you create a black and white. When you finally get it to where you want it, then you add the colors. Here's another logo, Jeep. But Jeep is just text. And Jeep can be text because it's really well known. They don't have to uh, have any type of a graphic or anything. Anytime somebody sees Jeep, they know exactly what it is. This is a nice logo. It has a nice flow to it. If you look at it, the colors. Now, this one here is not, the flow is not so great. Kind of, I would say, because right up here, it, your eye kind of gets stuck. So that could be tweaked and improved upon, I think. And another logo we have right here is for a law group. Now, this graphic looks nice, but I'd like to know what it is. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I might be missing something. It'd be nice if it had some type of a meaning to it. So you can see down here they've changed the rhythm. And changing the rhythm of the type is something you can do. Although I don't think these two relate well together as far as the rhythm is concerned. So here's another logo that's good. It has a uh, good flow to it. Your eye basically flows around in a circle here. Doesn't get stuck anywhere. And that's possibly because of the color and the design itself, the way it's been created. So that's a good logo. So I hope that helps. Thanks.